Hi class 7, we are continuing with the weathering chapter. We will start off with chief characteristics of weathering and we will also learn about types of weathering. In the types of weathering, we will just complete physical weathering today. Fine. We just completed the basic introduction of weathering in the last class. So you have an understanding and idea of what is weathering. So the chief characteristics is just a summary of what you learned yesterday. Weathering involves disintegration which means breaking up of solid rock. Number one. Number two, it depends upon climate elements on the characteristics of rock. For example, rock's chemical composition, hardness and permeability. Permeability means how much water it can allow. Determines weathering pattern. So if the rock has strong minerals, it has strong chemical composition. If the rock is hard, it is strong. If the rock doesn't allow water to flow through it, it doesn't have any holes or pores inside, it is hard. If the rocks have all these characteristics, it will weather very slowly. But if the rocks have all the opposite of these characteristics, it will weather very fast. Weathering affects the surface of the earth. Because when the rocks weather, earlier there would have been big big rocks in a particular place. But after it has weathered, that area would look like a plain land. So mountainous areas can be converted into plateaus and plateaus can future be converted into plains. All because of this one process weathering. And when it has been converted from bigger to smaller, it is forming the most important thing for survival of plants on earth soil weathering is the fundamental process that causes the formation or causes soil weathering degrades massive hard rocks into finer material the same thing how bigger rocks become smaller and form soil that is the same thing which is written here weathering prepares rock material for transportation by agents of gradation so after weathering what is going to happen erosion is going to happen so it is preparing the rock for being transported by agents of gradation. Agents of gradation means by river, by waves, by wind, by rain. All these are agents of gradation which can carry rocks broken down from one place to another and make it more smaller. Okay, we are going to move into types of weathering. So weathering can happen because of two types, physical and chemical. I have already taught you what is physical and chemical weathering. The not fully in detail but an idea of what is physical and chemical weathering in the previous video you can go and take a look again i would have drawn diagrams to tell you that physical weathering is just the breaking down of rocks the minerals do not change if a rock has a b c minerals if it is broken down into 100 pieces also all the pieces will have a b c minerals but chemical weathering is not like that it physically looks different after it has weathered but more importantly the chemical composition has become different if a rock has a b c minerals after breaking down it has only a and b or after breaking down it has only a and c or after breaking down it has only a b and c gone so the minerals are changing after the weathering is happening in chemical weathering the minerals are not changing after the weathering is happening in physical weathering so physical weathering is also called mechanical weathering it happens because of two major reasons one is temperature and one is water mechanical weathering or physical weathering involves disintegration i've already told you the meaning of disintegration breaking down of rocks so it involves breaking down of rocks without changing their chemical composition see this is the most important phrase of this definition please underline or circle it without changing their chemical composition so the chemical composition always remains the same the main factors responsible for the weathering is temperature number one which can be also known as heat frost action number two which can be also known as cold so you have heat and cold either this weathering will take place because it's too hot or this weathering can take place because it's too cold how can we learn about that okay let's get to know so first when it is hot number one heat Temperature. Weathering due to changes in temperature is more rapid in hot deserts because in hot deserts there is more heat. It is because the temperature changes are sharpest in the desert. There is a sudden rise and sudden fall in temperature causes expansion and contraction of rocks. So what happens is that during the day, imagine this is the rock. So you have a bigger rock here. I will draw it over here. This is a rock. Imagine this is a hot desert. During the day, it will try to expand push outside during the night so this happens during the day during the night it will start to come inside or 
contract so during the day it expands during the night it contracts expansion contraction expansion contraction causes expansion and contraction of rocks the repeated action causes the breakdown at night the temperature suddenly falls and during the day it rises suddenly this leads to tension tension is a uh, friction which is created an energy which is created which also leads to splitting of rocks this process of splitting of rocks continues under the rocks breaks down into form sand okay so that is how temperature leads to weathering number 2 frost action at high altitudes as in mountainous regions or cold places the freezing action of water also known as frost action so this is because of cold climate causes disintegration of rocks it happens in areas where there is a lot of moisture and temperature frequently fluctuate above and below freezing point the cracks and joints are filled with the water during the daytime at night when the temperature falls the water in the cracks and joints freezes its volume increases requiring more space it causes widening of joints and cracks on the rocks the repeated action weakens the rocks and splitting them and causing breaking of joints you can easily understand that in this diagram so what happens in the day during the day this is because of cold right the other was because of warm so during the day there's some amount of rainfall there's some amount of, amount of water and water collects in the cracks of a rock water is collected so before this you can think about an example filling a water bottle till the brim and putting it in a freezer in your fridge not just in the fridge but in the freezer above so if you put in the freezer what happens anything liquid will turn to solid it will become ice so if you fill the water bottle to the to the top level and close it with a cap and then put it in the fridge or the freezer at night it becomes frozen when you wake up early in the morning you can see that the water would have become ice that is one thing but more importantly the bottle the bottle would have broken why did the bottle break because the bottle have only a particular size if it's filled with water it is the whole volume of the bottle is over now when it is becoming ice the water when it becomes ice it will start to push on the sides of the bottle and it will start to crack the bottle on the sides it will break it okay so that is exactly what is happening here during the day the cracks are filled with water during the night when the water is changing into ice it is starting to push the cracks outward pushing the cracks outward so when it pushes the cracks outward you can see that here it is a small crack here it is a bigger crack here it is a narrow gap here is a deeper gap so this process of water being collected during daytime and it becoming ice during night time and it causing the rocks to crack open is called frost action this is water when it turns into ice it's frost and the frost is showing some action towards the rocks and that is frost action you can also look at this picture so water enters the rock during day time night time it freezes and it expands then the next day next month next year you can see that it is broken down into pieces so this is frost action it is also called freeze and thaw action because it is freezing it is thaw thaw is breaking out it is breaking because of freezing of water this was the earlier type we learnt day time it is expanding rock surface expands this night time rock surface contracts so expanding day time contracting night time what happens the upper layer can you see that the upper layer outer part gets cracks this is solid now this is getting cracks after some time the outer layer alone breaks out so this is because of temperature and this is because of frost action so these are the two major types of physical weathering which you just completed now we'll be learning chemical weathering in the next class